So I've been using an intraoral scanner for about six years now. We've been using the wired version of the Trios 3. And while it was very convenient to be rid of impression material when you're using a scanner, there was still one major issue which I was facing. And that issue is dragging along that laptop and that cart from room to room wherever we needed to do the scans. Of course, the Trios 3 was wired, so it needed to be physically connected to the laptop. And of course, it needed its power supply. So all of that stuff was a little bit inconvenient and a little bit cumbersome. There was always the fear that as you go from one room to the next, that you may accidentally bump into something and the scanner or the laptop falls to the floor and then you have a very expensive problem in your hands. Now we have wireless scanners and that's why I went in for the Trios 5, which is a completely wireless scanner. It doesn't really need power because it has batteries. However, the connection to the laptop is still very critical. So how do we get this connection to the laptop? The standard way to do it is to use the provided dongle, connect this to your computer, and then your scanner connects to that dongle and you therefore have your computer acquiring all of the data from your scanner. That's the standard way to do it. However, there is another option and that's called Trio Share, and I was super excited about it. What does this actually mean? This means your powerful computer or your laptop could sit in one particular room or operatory and you could just go with just the scanner to the various rooms which you want to work in and through screen sharing on the computer in that room you can view the screen of your very powerful computer which is actually handling the scan. So how do we implement this? Now the Trios PDF which they send you on how to configure all of this is pretty comprehensive but I still struggled with it quite a bit to set this up effectively. And this video is really just to show you how to do it so that you don't go crazy trying to set it up in your own practice. So the reason why I first got into an issue was because I was trying to use two different routers just with the same network name. So let's say the network name is Dental Review Guy in this room. I thought that if I go to the next room and keep the same network name on that Wi-Fi router, that I would be totally fine because as I'm scanning in this room, the scanner picks up this router, and as I go to the next room, the scanner picks up that router, and that's fine. But what ended up happening is this scanner, when I was in room B, was trying to still connect to the router in room A, and that became a very frustrating issue. So how did we jump over this hurdle? Well, there's something called mesh Wi-Fi routers, okay? And these are easily available wherever you are. They're pretty popular you need to make sure that your mesh Wi-Fi system is operating at the five gigahertz range. Most modern systems, which if let's say you decide to buy a Wi-Fi 6 router or a 6E router, these are going to definitely operate in the five gigahertz range. Now the Trios actually doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, it supports only up to Wi-Fi 5, but that's fine because all of these routers are backwards compatible. So my suggestion first, if you're gonna try and implement this in your largish office, which is where you would have this problem, and you want the flexibility of just running around with the scanner and nothing else, get a Wi-Fi 6 or a Wi-Fi 6E mesh router, okay? Don't buy individual routers or don't try to piece together older routers because that's not gonna work because the Trios is not gonna pick up the signal effectively to the router in the room that you're in. It may still try to connect to the previous router. Now, why does this happen? This is just because the device, the Trios, is trying to connect to the previously acquired Wi-Fi signal rather than looking for a new one. So when a mesh router is used, what happens is there is a proper handoff. The mesh system of these routers know that your device is now in closer proximity to the router in room B, and therefore the signal gets handed off almost seamlessly so that you can immediately start scanning in the next room without worrying about signal handoffs and all of that nonsense. So what system did I eventually decide to go in for? I did a lot of research and that's why I bought into ASUS. So if you look here, we have two identical routers. These are not terribly expensive. They're about six, 7,000 rupees each. And these are pretty much identical. These are the RT-AX1800HP. This one is perfectly fine for my needs. You could have actually gone even one step lower, which is the AX55. And the reason why I went for this was these have something called AI Mesh. And AI Mesh is basically, you can set up one router as the master and the other router as the slave, and it's going to share the same network name. So that network name of Dental Review Guy is gonna be the same across any number of routers you wanna add on. Let's say you have 10 rooms and you wanna have five routers for them, you will just add on to this mesh. It's gonna be the same Wi-Fi network, the same signal, and most importantly, the router is going to do the handoff. 
so that when you take your trios and you go from room to room, it picks up the nearest router instead of searching for the previously connected router, which may be a long distance away and compromising the signal. There are certain other things which you need to look at in your Wi-Fi settings. And this, the TRIOS manual also tells you. There's something called channel width. You need to be at least more than 40. I've set mine at 80. Your options are typically 20, 40, and 80. I've set mine at 80 because the router is very close proximity. There's no uh, sort of signal interference by like a brick wall or something like that which can kill the Wi-Fi signal. So if you have good line of sight to your router, then 80 is perfect. And the other thing is the, the channel number. So generally, your channel numbers would be something like in the 30s, in the 40s, in the 50s, and then all the way up to 120, 130, so on and so forth. Trios themselves, and in my experience as well, I've seen the best performance with the lower channel numbers. So around 36 or 40, that's perfectly fine. You can use apps on your Android or your iOS phone to see where, if there's any congestion of Wi-Fi, maybe you're in an apartment building, everyone has their own Wi-Fi, try to pick a channel that doesn't interfere with everyone else's Wi-Fi networks. So once you set this up as a mesh network, you have one as a master and the many other routers as a slave. They don't have to be identical in ACES. They can just be, they just need to say AI mesh. As long as it says AI mesh and it's Wi-Fi 5 or above, it's very hard to get Wi-Fi 5 now because that's old technology. You probably get Wi-Fi 6. As long as you get Wi-Fi 6 and above, you are going to be able to create a seamless network. One additional thing which is very useful and this is how we do it, all of our rooms have Ethernet ports and these Ethernet ports are very important to increasing the performance of your mesh network. What do I mean by that? So you have let's say a modem coming to your router and that's going to get plugged in over here and that's going to send out this Wi-Fi signal. Now if this is in another room and there's a wall blocking it, it is going to be part of the mesh but it's not going to be as fast as this one because there's a wall blocking it. However, if this room, room B, also had a wire, an Ethernet wire going into the back of this router, then that's called an Ethernet backhaul. If you have an Ethernet backhaul supplying your nodes in your mesh, then you're going to have a much, much better performance. There'll be no difference in the performance between the node or the slave and the master. So if possible in your office, if you're redoing your office, if you're renovating, or it's not a big deal to lay some cables, please consider wherever you're planning to scan to have a cable either in the room or just outside so that you can get your nodes or your slave routers onto that Ethernet backhaul. And this is what is going to make your signal completely foolproof. I'm going to show you how it looks when we use this system live. So we're going to start in one room, we're going to start our scan and we're just going to go to the other room. The camera is going to keep rolling and I'm going to show you how well that works. All right, so now the Trios 5 is ready. We know it's ready and it's connected to the Wi-Fi with that green light over there. And let's start our scan. So Let's scan half the arch in this room and then let's go to the other room. And if you take a look at the screen now, you can see that the scan is proceeding very, very smoothly. And if you take a look at the router next to the screen, that's the one doing the connection between the scanner and the desktop. Now, where exactly is the desktop? It's right below the table over there. And you can see that's a pretty powerful desktop. It's better than a laptop because we don't have the issues of airflow in a big desktop like that, so it stays fast, it stays powerful, and it typically is cheaper. So now that we've scanned half the arch over here, I would like to move to the next room and continue this scan. So just follow me, I've stopped the scanner, we're not changing anything else, we're just going to go to the next room. So if you take a look over here, you can see that there's another router over here and this is in a mesh configuration. So this behaves like a node to the master router in that room. So follow me in here. The first step is of course opening our screen sharing software. In our case we're using Splashtop and you can see our Trios 5 computer is active. So now we are screen sharing with the powerful computer in that room. So I'm now in the next room and I'm going to go to where I would typically work and I'm going to continue the scan. And you can see the scan is proceeding seamlessly and beautifully because the scanner is not trying to connect to the router in the first room. It's just connecting to the one which is just outside this door. And therefore we have a smooth scan which we are able to complete. So the advantage of this is I don't really need to lug around the laptop and the cart and all of that stuff. All I need to go from room to room is the actual scanner itself. And if that 
room already has a computer like this, no problem. I could even use an iPad for the same so that I can screen share to an iPad. So you just need one powerful computer. And I think this is a huge, huge bonus of the Trios 5, which not enough people are talking about. So that's it. I hope I've confused you enough. This is the Dental Review Guy signing off with a smile.